Look at the look at the homie. Look at the gay. Hey, Q. Q Hey yo, man, chill, bro. Look at the gang, bro. We out here. Sack lunches and shit. You know what I'm saying? Sack lunches and shit. Hey, DJ Spot Star all over again. Hey, you There you go. There you go. Look, look. There you go. Okay. New York strip steak. Ooh. Braised beef short ribs? Damn. What else we got? Shrimp and grits? Oh, fuck with it. I ain't fuck with that cheesecake, though. They got that creme boulet. On March 11, 2020, the Dallas Mavericks and the Denver Nuggets played the final game of the 2020 NBA season. There hasn't been a single game in the NBA for the past four months. And now, the NBA is in the midst of doing something completely unprecedented. During a time where a global pandemic is sweeping our nation, the National Basketball Association has come up with an unconventional proposition in order to resume the 2020 season. Some people were 100% on board for the proposition and have already decided to buy in, whereas others are not as into the idea of restarting the NBA season in the midst of a global pandemic. The proposal is very simple. There are 20 22 teams. These 22 teams are all to be living in a bubble at Disney World Orlando over the duration of the entirety of the NBA season. Pretty much these guys are going away to sleep away camp and living there for two months while playing basketball. Sounds like every teenager's dream, right? Well, that isn't necessarily the truth here, as you're going to come to see that each and every team has various amenities that other teams do not. As a matter of fact, what hotel you stay in and how nice your room is is 100% based upon how great your team has performed over the past NBA season. The Grand Destino is where you want to be. If you happen to be one of the lucky individuals that were able to squeeze into the top four of either the Eastern Conference or the Western Conference, then congratulations. You are staying at the best hotel that Disney World Orlando has to offer. And I'll show you the lifestyle of a player that's staying in the Grand Destino in just a moment. If you happen to finish at the bottom half of your conference, meaning the five, six, seven, and eight seeds of the Western or the Eastern Conference, then you're gonna stay at the Grand Floridian. Finally, if you're a team that is in the outside looking into the playoff picture and didn't finish within the one to eight seed, then you're gonna be staying at the Yacht Club. This is the lowest end hotel that you could stay at. So you remember that footage of J.R. Smith that I showed you at the very beginning of the video? Well, let's look at it again and pay attention to what he has available to him for dinner. Okay. New York strip steak. Ooh. Braised beef short ribs. Damn. What else we got? Shrimp and grits? Oh, fuck with me. I ain't fuck with that cheesecake though. They got that creme boulet. So I know what you guys might be thinking. Mike, all of this sounds pretty freaking good. New York strip steak? Braised beef short ribs? Shrimp and grits? Creme boulet? And plus, you know, when you have J.R. Smith looking at the menu and saying it with his facial expression. Ooh, damn, 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 damn. And, you know, just based off of how excited he is to be in, at Disney World in general, you would think, okay, this is the NBA. They're feeding their athletes top tier food. Well, here's the thing. While all of that stuff does sound really nice, I feel like the equivalent to this and the best analogy I could give you to describe what the NBA players are going through is pretty much being a kid, maybe in third or fourth grade, at your public school cafeteria when you're going in and you see something really good on the menu, but the cafeteria just doesn't know how to do it right. Because do you want to know what the New York strip steak looks like and how the players are reacting to it once they see it? Take a look for yourself. There we is in the Lando. All right, let's check this out. We got little, little rolls. 
The mask. Oh, no, I didn't need a mask. Look, carry cake. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Let's see. Let's see. Look good. Mm-mm. 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 Not the thing. And that's a fact. They spit. I'm on my way, bro. A hey, fucking yo. Chocolate snacks. Oh, my little goodie bag. Cool. Chocolate popcorn. Get it out of here. More chocolate popcorn. Get it out of here. Chocolate popcorn. Get it out of here. There's a yogurt. Sugar wafers. Get it out of here. Doritos. Chex mix. What else? Let's look. Hmm. Keep that for later. Ugh. Ugh. Gross. For Vita mac and cheese? No, thank you. I'm throwing this away. Ooh. Now we're talking famous anus. Love this. Not bad at all, actually. What else I get man? There's a lot of little treats. The commissary on this shit is crazy, bro. Seriously. Bro, look at this bag. Let me ask you this: We professional athletes and all that, right? Thirty-five, thirty-four, thirty, thirty, three, four hundred million making from some of these dudes. Thirty, forty, fifty million a year. You want these niggas to eat this shit? They'd be over there crying, talking about somebody can't stay healthy and they body breaking down and all this other shit. <sighs> just saying, bro. I'm just can't. I'm just saying, you want a motherfucking Ferrari to run like a Ferrari because you pay for it as a Ferrari, but you keep gassing it up with motherfucking a Chrysler shit. Mayor Smith makes a great point here. Historically, we've seen many professional athletes credit their diet for their success most famously being Novak Djokovic when he went on a gluten-free diet in tennis, which resulted in him playing the best tennis of his life. Tom Brady is famously vegan in order to attempt to play the most ruthless and reckless sport in the entire world until the age of 45, something that is absolutely unheard of. LeBron James is notorious for investing a million dollars each year into various workout regimens, supplements, and nutrition that he intakes in order to sustain his body. As a result, he's been able to be one of the most productive players in NBA history over the past 17 years, despite having the most mileage and wear and tear on his body, including eight straight NBA Finals appearances, LeBron has still been able to keep going strong and has had very minor injuries throughout the time. But it's not like these players are condemned to eating this bad food. Joel Embiid, for example, seems to have a fairly nutritious meal in front of him of grilled chicken. He just doesn't think it looks that appeasing because because, well, it's packaged and it does kind of look like airplane food. But Ben McLemore, on the other hand, seems to have come up with a good solution to try to get over the fact that the food doesn't look so good. Look here. I just finished this little meal that they gave us. Oh no, either I was home. It was good. I just smashed on it. Warmed that up. I re reheated it. My body ain't gonna I ate all that. 
while I do agree with J.R. Smith on the fact that NBA players that are bound to go to the NBA playoffs in hopes of competing for a NBA championship, especially in a game where we see players get off of social media, quit red meat, and do everything they can to get their bodies prepared for the grueling NBA playoffs, I do think it's kind of weird that the NBA is giving their players mac and cheese and candy. But as you can see from what Ben McLemore said, I don't think the food is as bad as they think it is, especially if you're ordering the red meat, because look at what Innes Cantor got. Our first meal in bubble in Orlando. We got steak, greens, sweet potato, chips, fruit, some cheese, bread, salad, and some milk. I actually like it a lot, not bad. Thank you. Good morning, fellas. This is getting better and better. Halal. Look at all the snacks we have, man. I feel like we should be a little more grateful and thankful. Thank you, NBA. Appreciate it. Oh, that's my favorite. I'm taking a Kit Kat. <laughs> Thank you. Man, they on Instagram cat, man, talking about the food. Man, that's solid cooking where I'm coming from, man. You got the chicken, you know, you got the salad, you got the green bean. Come on, man. All that cooking, man. They, come on, man. Where I'm from, this good cooking right here. I don't know if I'm tripping or not, but this good cooking where I came from, you know. If I had to give the NBA a grade for the food that they're serving in the bubble, it would be a C plus. On one hand, I understand they have to serve a lot of players, but on the other hand, it appears as if there are some good options for players. Now, let me know in the comment section down below what grade you would give the NBA for the food that they are serving, because this next part of the video is probably my favorite part, and that's the tour of every player's room. And you're gonna see some differences based off of each player's roles on the team. Clearly, J.R. Smith isn't gonna have the same amenities that Anthony Davis and LeBron James do and boy believe me he acknowledges that himself yo bruh bruh they not they didn't do that bro they didn't do that my fucking blanket. Let me show you this shit. Look at the blanket, bro. Look at the blanket, bro. Bro. What the fuck? Nah, I know, I know, bro. I ain't got this. I know bra AD, these niggas out here 612. I know they not using this little ass blanket, bro. Alright, uh, let's see. How is that hotel bubbles look like? Okay. That's it? <laughs> oh my god. If you're gonna stay here for three months, I better get a good view. Oh lord, not bad. So we're gonna stay here for Stay here for three months. That's it. <laughs> Lord help us. Oh no. But I wanted to show you this. Okay, Disney. I see you. This is beautiful. Good morning. What's up, guys? Uh, looking for a charger. Here we go. That's what I need. Check out the room. Yeah, we the first team here, first team in Orlando, from Orlando. Got a nice little balcony. It's not bad, man. I mean, for the most part. Man, I might be able to get like a little fishing rod and just cast right out here. Ooh, and it's hot, so I'm going back inside. It's not bad, though. I mean, the room is... It's a room. Got a TV, some gifts from the NBA. Got the balcony out there. Yeah, that's what I'm setting my little hoop at. Little bed. Look, it's supposed to be twins, but. Yeah. Little kitchen. 
bathroom. I walked in this bitch tripping, shoes untied, everything. Guys, if you want a part two to this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my notifications. I don't want to risk making this video way too long. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I know there's going to be plenty more to cover. Aside from that, I'm your boy, The Flight Mike, and I'll catch you guys in our next upload.